This one goes out to all the busy bitches out there. And let me be clear, a busy bitch um, does not indicate a specific gender. You can be a guy and be a busy bitch. But busy bitch is really just the essence of like, we got too much going on. We don't have time for this. We don't have time for this. But we still care about our homes. We got laundry to fold, exercise routines to disappoint, uncles to text, etc. Life is busy. But you still want your home to be a place that kind of excites and delights you. Yes, you do. I promise you, you do. So in this video, we're going to cover some like design cheat sheet items, some shortcuts, some tricks, how to minimize your effort, stuff you don't need to worry about. And we're also going to hit a couple of design like cheat codes to make your home look instantly curated, instantly artistic without too much work. Yeah, this is good. Wow. This is going to be a very good video. If I do say so myself. Here we go. I woke up this morning. Got me feeling brand new like to do. Got me feeling the uh, I got a haircut. I don't know if I'm loving my bangs, but life goes on. Today's video is made possible by Wayfair, and I will tell you more about them later. Okay, some fun things. Let, I just want to hit the fun stuff, the cheat codes. Here are a couple cheat codes. There are so many design cheat codes I could share, but these ones are things you can do they are like random mass things you can do that are gonna make your home feel instantly curated. You're like, I want a cool, bespoke, custom home look. I wanna get all the clout for having a cool home, but I don't have the time to make that it that. I don't have the time, I don't have the time, so I'm just gonna have a boring home. No, you don't have to have a boring home. This is what you can do. Here are a couple of cheat codes to look instantly artistic. Number one. Let's get a little image insert here. Number one, you have a piece of art. You got a single piece of art somewhere. You've centered it nicely wherever it needs to be centered. This is what we're going to do. Let's just move it. Let's just move it a little off center. Move it a little off center for no good reason. For no good reason. Just make it a little off kilter and never explain it to anybody. If anybody's like, does that need to be centered? To be like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. Ignore the question completely. Refuse to acknowledge it. Just make it a little off center. A little off center and people are gonna be like, does she know something I don't know? It just is instantly interesting. It doesn't work in all instances. I don't know why. I don't know why. Like, I love symmetry at times, but there's some moments where a little indefensible, inexplicable asymmetry is just like the hottest thing you can do. Just take that, just take that frame and just move it. Just move it for no good reason and leave it there. People are gonna walk in your home and they're gonna be like, wow, something's happening in here. That is what they're gonna feel like, okay? It's, 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 it's like, I don't, it's instantly cool. Sometimes I, 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 I put artworks or decor pieces off center by force in a room with a lot of asymmetry. Like my powder bath has a lot of asymmetry. The door's off to one side, the vanity's off to one side, the towel rack's off to another side. It's kind of chaotic. And when I hung up my art, leaning into asymmetry actually brings some balance. It, it would almost feel weird to put everything Set, center justified, now I'm speaking in coding terms, center justified, center, you know, center aligned in a room that's otherwise asymmetrical. So sometimes leaning into asymmetry is the way you achieve balance. And sometimes it's just the way you kook out. Sometimes it's just fun and weird. Move your art off center. Just do it. Easy. Done. Takes equal amount of time to do that as to hang it centered. Actually, I would say it takes less time because you don't have to do the measuring. You're a boom. You're a visionary. <laughs> Cheat code number two. If you are designing a home, this goes for the renovators, which I am not. So if you feel excluded, I'm sorry. I also feel excluded. But, you know, file this away in your mind for whenever you do maybe want to customize a home. You're designing a home, you're renovating a home, you're upgrading a home, and you want it to look custom, but like, dude, that takes a lot of work. I can't customize this whole place. I can't customize this whole place. You're busy. You're too busy. Here's one thing you can customize, and it's going to melt people's minds. This is what you're going to do. You're just going to recess something. Recess it. Just recess some shit. Just recess, recess some shit. People are gonna lose their minds. I lose my mind. A recessed cubby hole, a recessed shower 
shelf, a recessed, oh my God, a recessed cabinet, a recessed wardrobe in the wall, inset built into the wall, recessed into the wall. It's the co- like, it's the coolest, it's the coolest. You, there's nowhere to go from there. There's nowhere to go from there. You have to call it a day because there's nowhere else to go. It's so cool. A recessed, um, built-in side table type deal. Instant artistry. Just, re- just start recessing shit. Just start a recessed bench in a wall. Just start recessing shit. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm getting excited. You just start recessing things. And no one, no one isn't even going to know what to say to you. They're not even going to know what to say. It actually might end a lot of your relationships because people are going to come in, they're going to be speechless. You guys won't have anything to talk about because they'll just be like taken with this recessed thing in your wall. Just start recessing shit. And um, there's a lot of cool like period specific, period style specific ways to recess things. Um, a lot of Victorian homes featured a lot of recessed cabinetry, recessed wardrobes even. So that can be very fun. Trying to align it with the style of the home. You know, do a little bit of learning and just recess. Ooh, recess. Woof. Woof to that. Cheat code number three. If you want to renovate your home and keep everything like pretty standard, pretty basic, and you want one area to throw in some funk that's going to make your home feel so custom and, and unique, Focus on the floors. Focus on the floors, especially in the kitchen. Focus on the floors in the kitchen specifically. The kitchen, the master bath, these are two of the features that, first of all, most affect home resale value because they take the most work. You know, a bedroom, you can repaint, you can redecorate, living room, you can redecorate, whatever. But when you're looking to, someone's looking to buy a home, you're looking at master bath and kitchen. Those are big, big deals for people. Really good place to invest. Even if you're not gonna resell the home, those areas just have like, especially the kitchen, it's communal. You're not inviting everyone to your master bath. So in the kitchen, (laughs) um, maybe you are. I don't know what kind of parties you have. In your kitchen, big impact, right? for getting a custom look in your kitchen. But if you don't wanna go crazy, you just wanna pick one thing, focus on the floors. I love a checkerboard. You can do a checkerboard floor in a bunch of different variations. You can do a colored version, you can do a black and white, you can do a painted version if you have hardwoods. Or if you've got hardwood floor and you don't wanna go too funky but you wanna make it more unique, you can do a really wide plank. Or a super narrow plank can be a really fun look. I love a lot of English country home inspo where you could see sometimes even a brick floor, a stone slab floor. Love it. So focus on your floors. Do something colorful. Do like a strange size or you can have a huge impact there and you're done. That's it. You're too busy to make everything interesting. That floor is going to have an impact. Yeah. Sunny day, sunny day, sunny day. Okay, here's a nice little other cheat code for you. Okay, wait, I need to reapply my lipstick. I I cannot tell you how upsetting it is to like film a whole video and then go back and watch the footage and be like, my my this one piece of hair was so weird the whole time, or like my lipstick got messed up and now I just have to look at that forever. One time I filmed a video, my uh like apartment hunting video, and there was just like a piece of sparkle. I don't even know where the sparkle came. There was just like a sparkle on my face for like the whole video, and it I could I mean it will really drive you insane after you've spent like hours and hours filming and planning and then there's just like a sparkle. This one sparkle throws you off and that's the only thing people are gonna comment on. People don't care in the comments how much time you spent researching or scripting or planning or filming or whatever. They're like, there's a sparkle. Okay, anyhow. All right, moving on. Here's a cheat code. (laughs) If you wanna have a custom home, a customized look that's specific and individual to you but you don't wanna put that much time and effort in, This is how I would say to save energy. You don't necessarily need to scout out bespoke custom furniture in order to get a custom look. Here's what I would do. So in your home, you've got like foundational pieces. It's usually the larger things, you know, your dining table, your bed, your sofa, your armoire, um, your, your media stand, whatever. And then you've got your accent decorative pieces, the artwork, the decor items, the picture frames, etc. You can go and like try to pursue curating a super custom home 
by customizing every single piece, but like that takes a lot of effort, especially for the functional larger pieces, like looking for the custom couch, looking for a custom couch that's gonna be a super unique look, super customized, super specific to you, but also functional, also the right size, also comfortable and like suits your squish preferences or whatever the term is for couches. That takes a lot more work. What I would do, I would say, feel comfortable going kind of basic, classic, standard even for your foundational pieces, and then let your accent pieces be what's customized because it's way way easier to find those. It takes way less energy. I myself, I have a cream colored white couch from Crate and Barrel. It's not vintage. It's not um, custom made and it didn't cost me millions of dollars. It's like a standard freaking couch. It's very comfortable, which is important to me, but the custom look comes from like custom pillows that I spent more time looking for. That's where the custom looks comes from. And this is not to say that you shouldn't or couldn't get a custom sofa, but that is just, you know, finding a vintage one or a retro one and shipping it and make sure it's comfortable. And do you have to reupholster and whatever that just takes so much more work and you can still have a really customized look by doing like a more classic, standard, almost basic look for your foundational pieces and then make the accents the thing that's customized. Instead of just being like, accents are customized and so are the foundational pieces. It's a lot of time. Who has the time? I don't have the time. It saves you a lot of time. You still get a specific look. I woke up this morning Got me feeling brand new Like I know what to do Got me feeling nostalgic Oh, you guys, this whole channel is made possible by Wayfair today. They've been one of the best supporters of my channel. And if you're enjoying what you see here, they have given me an entire show on their channel that you should check out. If, if you love interior design chat, if you like kooking out a little bit, some silly content, and you like to learn, it's actually going to be all of those. I think it's a pretty good casserole of entertainment. Yeah, sticking by the metaphor. You already know that Wayfair has basically every home goods, product, decor item you could need for whatever your home style is, but they also have a YouTube channel and you can find me there doing some stuff. My show is called Iconic Objects. It is very sweet. Each episode does a deep dive into an iconic object, but maybe you've never stopped to ask why, such as the pink lawn flamingo. When and where and why and how did we all attach to the pink lawn flamingo to the point that it became a cultural icon? That episode just came out, it's episode four. We've also done episodes on the live, laugh, love sign. What happened to us all there? The iconic recliner chair, the disco ball. Have you noticed that disco balls? I mean, obviously they had a moment many moments over the decades, but they're having one now too. So like, what are these cultural shifts that makes us all attach to a design moment? I would definitely go check out the channel. It's so much fun. It's very silly. I can't believe the things that they let me say and do over there. Wayfair was already one of my favorite sponsors and it's just elevated them even higher in my mind. They're too much fun. They know how to make a good show and you guys are gonna like it. You can go check out full episodes of Iconic Objects on their channel. Remember to like and subscribe. Don't make me ask you twice because they have a ton of great other interior design content. I've included a link in the description of this video. Girl, you won't regret it. I'd like to outline a couple of pitfalls. If you identify as a busy, busy boy, a busy girl, a busy bitch, there are a couple of pitfalls, a couple of things that I think you're gonna want to avoid, whether you're purchasing furniture for your home or designing a home. Some pitfalls I would avoid if you're a busy bitch. <sighs> Some of these are hard for me. First of all, I've learned, I've learned a lot of this by trial and error, my own mistake. Number one, glass top furniture a glass top table, I had a glass top desk. These glass pieces can be really nice to, to add a little modern touch to your home. I mean, they can be beautiful aesthetically. I'm not complaining about the aesthetics, but oh my God, unless you like the look of dust, unless you like the look of dust as much as you like the look of that glass table, unless you love to see your own fingerprints, every single one, I can't handle it. I can't handle the glass. I don't have time to clean it all. I would even be cleaning, I got this one glass top desk from West Elm. It was super cute, super cute desk, except in reality, the reality of having that desk, and I would actually commit myself to cleaning it every day, and it still mostly looked filthy. So 
even if you have a housekeeper, even if you have a maid or something, unless they're coming twice a day, the glass top, like it almost never looks like a clean glass top piece of furniture. It almost always, to me, just looks like dust or fingerprints. If you're a busy gal or you're a busy boy or you're a busy bitch, I would not with the glass top furniture. I really don't think it's worth it. I think it's gonna hurt you. Something else, wow, I actually see this in my home. Something else that I would think twice about. <laughs> if you buy an area rug with really long fringe on the ends, you know I'm talking about the end fringe on a rug, it can be a cute look. But the tangle that will happen every single second of the day, like it will never just look like nice combed fringe. It's gonna be tangle all the time and it really ruins the look. It's not so much that like parts of our home can't be a mess sometimes, but when the fringe becomes unhinged, unhinged fringe, it just kind of ruins the whole look of the rug to me. So that, Unless you're getting down on your knees with a little comb and coming out your cart rug fringe all the time, I would not. These are little things that like the, the idea, the theory of the design item is nice, but unless you have the time to meticulously and neurotically tend to your rug fringe, it kind of ruins the whole thing. I would not. That being said, there's a little bit of fringe on my rug in here. It's, it's minimal, so I think it's okay, but a long one, I would not. It's gonna drive you crazy, and then you've bought something that you're like excited about, but then every day you look at it, every moment you look at it, it looks naughty as hell. Okay, if you are designing a home, or just like looking for your next rental, some things to keep in mind. Dark surfaces show everything. Dark surfaces show all the dirt, all the crumbs. For example, I love dark wood floors. I love dark wood floors. I have them in my apartment currently. And if I was buying a home for like a family, I would think twice about it. Unless you want to be cleaning all the time, you will see every footprint. You will see every piece of dust. You will see every crumb. If you got a lot of people running through your home, dark wood floors, they do show more. If you got like a bunch of little feet scampering around all the time, a couple of pets, and such, or you just have dirty friends, the light wood is gonna hide a lot of the mess, surprisingly. I don't know why that, that kind of feels counterintuitive to me, but the light wood, I guess cause like crumbs and dust are light colored, the light wood actually conceals the mess. You're gonna wanna vacuum less. You'll have to vacuum less, it's not gonna bother you. I don't know, it's something to think about. It's something to think about. That being said, I way prefer the look of dark hardwood floors. So it's a hard call. But if you're a busy boy and you know you don't want to be seeing the mess and you also don't have the time to clean it, I would consider light. I would consider lighter. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what, same goes for dark countertops. Ugh. Dark countertops, again, I got black countertops in my rental apartment right now. They show everything. God forbid a single grain of salt bounce off of my plate onto the countertop it's, it's killing me, it's killing me. And, and no, I don't have enough things to worry about in my life. Given that that single grain of salt is killing me, obviously I don't have enough problems in my life, but it is, that's where I find myself. So if you relate to that, I do not wanna be, ugh. If I don't wipe down the counters after every single visit over there, it looks filthy all the time, it never looks clean. If you wanna do a dark countertop, like I love the look of a black countertop, in theory, on Instagram, the reality is killing me. If you can get one with some texture in it, maybe some speckles, it can camouflage a little bit because the truth is like a light colored countertop, it has some dust and some crumbs and some speckles and that's fine. But when you're staring at it and it's like highlighted, it doesn't feel nice, especially in the area where you're preparing food. It doesn't feel nice. It makes a big difference. Um, this is, okay, busy, busy people. This is something I hear from people all the time saying, and I, and I feel it myself at times, that like, I don't have the time. I don't have a, the time to sit down and design this whole room, you know, floor to ceiling. And to that I would say, don't worry about designing a room all at once. That's not how most good spaces are designed. That's a pretty rare way 
to design a space. Most amazing spaces are built over time. And that's how most of us curate our home. So don't get stressed out about like, I have to figure it all out now. You're gonna layer stuff on. You know, even usually if you work with a designer and you're paying them to design a room all at once, most often you pass off the designer, passes off the design plan, and then what do people do? They just sit on it. They just sit on the design plan for like a year before they start moving on things. Most spaces are built slowly over time. You get to experience things, encounter decor items that inspire you, incorporate them into your home, adjust the plan, find something new you like, a new color you never thought of. So don't worry about doing it all at once. Okay, so you're getting started in your space. A lot of people say they don't know how to get started. What you wanna do, is think about the 70-30 rule. So here's a cheat code. You're busy, here's a cheat code. You wanna think about the 70-30 rule. Like, there are no rules, but this is a guide that can help you. And the guide here is that 70% of your space is like your anchoring scheme. Whether it's a design scheme, a style, a color scheme, 70% is this main anchoring scheme, and then 30% are accent pieces, additional pieces that you're gonna add on to make things pop, to make it visually interesting, to make it not one note, but 70% is gonna be like the main theme. Recently, I was talking through with my little sister who was putting together um, a design plan for her new apartment, and she'd picked out a really lovely color palette. The color palette looked good, the colors looked good together, but then something changed and something was off when it was translated to the space. And what was happening is that um, she hadn't focused on the percentages, like how much of the pie is each of those colors. Yes, they look good equally together, but if you have five main colors all used in equal amounts throughout your home or space, that's gonna be intense. That's probably gonna be a lot. It's rare to find a space done with like 20% equally each five colors that works. That's, that's pretty rare. If you're thinking about colors, then 70% of your space are gonna be like your two to three main colors. And then the accent is only gonna be 30%. And you're like, great, Caroline, that would be helpful if I even had a color palette. I don't even have time to pick out a color palette. Here's your cheat code. You're gonna go to coolers.com. Not sponsored, never sponsored. We'll always love this web app that generates color palettes completely free. You can just get random color palettes generated. You can input a color you already have. You've got a purple couch. You wanna see what would look good with a couch. Flip through some stuff that looks good with that purple. Super easy, not sponsored. They probably hate me, but I use this app all the time. Don't ever stress about color palettes. I got you. If you're moving into a new space, I would say don't try and like purchase everything at once, anchor pieces, accent pieces. Make sure your anchor pieces are cohesive first and then adding in an accent pillow, adding in a weird little sculpture in like a bright pink. Think about those two or three main colors when you're buying your bedding and you're buying your furniture and you're buying your rug. Stick to those two or three. You can definitely have more colors than that in your room, but the remainder, that 30% of accent colors or accent pieces, those are kind of easy to throw in. Those are gonna be you know, decor items or pieces of art, stuff you find traveling or in a random store one day. Those are easy to throw in. What's harder is making sure you have a unified foundation to start yourself off with. Focus on your anchor scheme and then allow yourself to add the accent scheme, the 30% in like later as you go. Yeah, sunny day, sunny day, sunny days. No clouds in the sky, but I get away feel Okay, I hope those were uh, a couple of helpful shortcuts for you. Shortcuts, excuse me, where you don't need to spend energy. You know, that's the thing with design, it's kind of hard to know. You could, you could spend energy infinite places, but we don't have infinite time. I don't. I have you know, lipstick to apply and bangs to complain about. I've got stuff to do. You don't think I'm busy? I am, I am. The amount of time it took to just to tie the double knots on the sweater was uh, exorbitant. Maybe there's some tips in here that are helpful. Somebody you know who's about to start decorating their space, designing their space. They don't know where to start. They got limited time. Oh, I love a cheat sheet. I love cutting corners. You kidding me? I love to cut a corner. All day I cut corners. It's, like, it's actually what I, I, I enjoy, cutting corners more than I really like anything. I'm totally taking, I'm totally taking suggestions. I've really liked doing this series of interior design for XYZ Persona. If you like this video, I did um, interior design for hot, sexy bachelors, home organization for chaotic people. If you can think of another persona that you haven't seen a video, an in, a design video on, I do like doing kind of like a 
a specific design take that someone else isn't doing on YouTube. So if you can think of a design persona, oh, I did, I did another video. It wasn't actually in this series, but I did a video earlier this year that was like how to decorate when you're depressed. So I would call that like interior design for depressives, um, which I, you know, included myself in that very much. But um, if you can think of another persona that you'd like a design video for, send that to me. I, I, would, I would love some suggestions. I don't always take the suggestions, but if it's good, I'll do it. If it's good and it resonates in my heart. Okay, that's all I gotta say. I'm getting, I'm getting loopy. That means I gotta go. Bye-bye.